Mr. Josh Healy. When I was in high school, I was co-president of my school's drama club, and I loved it. I loved the costumes. I loved all 11 people who came to our shows. <laughs> and most of all, I loved my drama club co-president, Sophia Feingold. Oh, Sophia Feingold. Half Jewish, half Puerto Rican. She was the Jew Eurekan queen of my heart. <laughs> Sophia was brilliant. So brilliant, she spent most of our senior year taking extra classes over at the local university. And she hung out a lot at the campus women's center there and came back to school one day wearing this t-shirt that read, this is what a feminist looks like. And I thought, wow. Feminists look good. <laughs> I was your average 17-year-old boy, big into my Sega Genesis, still brushing up on my third wave feminist theory. Now, Sophia and I, we had to pick a show for our drama club's annual spring play. And she told me she had this really exciting idea. She said, Josh, there's this show. It's blowing up at all the colleges around the country. I really think we should do it. It's called The Vagina Monologues. I said, what? What show do you want to do at our high school senior play? She said, Josh, it's a great show. You're going to love it. It's all about celebrating women's voices, our bodies, our power. Now, normally, it's an all-female cast but we're not gonna do it the normal way. I said, we're not. She said, no, Josh, we are gonna do the first ever co-ed vagina monologues. And I've got the perfect role for you. It's called My Angry Vagina. I said, whoa, Sophia, that sounds like a pretty major role. I'm not sure I've, uh, you know, got what it takes. She said, if any guy can do it, Josh, you can. And I wasn't sure if I was supposed to take that as a compliment, but Sophia Feingold was smiling at me so I was like, of course, of course, of course, of course I'll do it. I mean, anything for the drama club. But in the back of my head, somewhere, I was like, could I really pull this off? My angry vagina. I was gonna have to do some research. So I went right to the record store and bought every Ani DeFranco album I could. Listen to them all weekend long, rocking that Ani. And when I came into the theater for the first day of rehearsal, I saw the rest of the cast. Four girls and four very excited, totally confused guys. Each of us with our own monologue on a different issue. A girl's first period. A woman giving birth a woman being raped. And of course, my monologue, which was a rant against the oppression of tampons and douches and every OBGYN tool that could really piss a woman off. <laughs> or so I was learning. This was definitely going to be an educational experience. But there were some people, though, who did not see it quite that way. Like every guy on my soccer team. 
who every day at practice would ask me questions like, hey, Josh, hey, 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 Josh, hey, how's that play going? You get fitted for your panties yet? <laughs> no. Meanwhile, Sophia's friends, her own friends, the college feminists, they weren't too happy either. This one woman came by rehearsal to tell us, what is this? This is supposed to be the vagina monologues. What are all these boys doing here? This play is about women speaking in our voices, which seemed like a decent point to me. But then Sophia said, hey, if we want to have good men later on, then we need to have good boys now. Which also seemed like a pretty good point. Especially when she looked over in my direction and winked. So the show was on. And buzz was building. And tickets were almost sold out. And then one day, the rest of the cast called me and Sophia in for a meeting. They said, we need to talk. And this one girl said, look, guys, we've been talking a little bit and maybe those college girls were right. I mean, this co-ed idea is fun and all, but these are some serious women's issues. We should be the ones talking on them. Sophia, she did not like anyone questioning her vision. She said she was furious. She said, so what? So, so you're just backing out? And one of the guys said, no, 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 not everyone, just the fellas. I mean, we'll be there in the show, but in the audience. And I'm sitting here like this, this is crazy. The feminist director is being out feministed by the cast? But Sophia wasn't going down like that. She said, well, thank you everybody for all your lovely creative input. But as co-president of this here drama club, this is how we're gonna do the show. Right, Josh? And she looked over at me. And I looked over at Sophia then walked over and joined the rest of the cast. Sophia didn't say a word. She just stormed off. And I resigned as co-president of the drama club. Until one month later. One month to the day later, I walked back into the theater for the big premiere. And the place was packed. Even the soccer team was there. The lights went down, the curtain went up, and when the first performer finished her monologue, every girl in the crowd was on her feet cheering. Every guy in the crowd was sitting in his seat fidgeting uncomfortably. Every parent in the crowd was wishing we had done Hamlet again. <laughs> and then came the monologue I'd been waiting for. The one I knew all the lines to. And out to play the part, steps Sophia Feingold. And she walks slowly to the middle of the stage. And before she even said a word, she just looked out into the audience. And through all the faces in that high school auditorium, she looked right at me. It felt like we were the only two people in the room. And in that look, in that one look she gave me, I saw more than just anger. I saw her strength. I saw her conviction. I saw a fierce female power that I could only imagine. And I realized the queen has come to claim her throne. Sophia was the right person for the part, and she freaking knew it. That was my co-president up there. That was her role up there on the stage, mine here in the audience. 
I had been in the drama club for four years, and it was all leading up to this. And Sophia Feingold took a step forward and said in the loudest, proudest voice I'd ever heard, my vagina, it's angry. It's pissed off. My vagina, it's furious. And it needs to talk. <laughs>